there's a new um retro active video that somebody linked to me on my fucking um discord it's the continuous implosion of brendan shaw which i haven't watched which um we should watch along together and see what the vibe is. This is the continuous implosion of Brendan Shaw by the channel Retroactive. Let's see Wagwan with this one. Let's see Wagwan. I haven't watched this just yet, so let's see if this is any good. Uh, let's switch the scenes. Let's go. Come on, mate. Can you load for me, please? Fuck, you know, it's got 156,000 views. I can't for I can't think of the last bit of Brendan Shaw content that he has made himself that has that many views. This is fucking crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. The economy around Brendan Shaw that he's created for being really bad at stand-up comedy always makes me laugh, man. It would never not make me laugh. I'm not gonna lie. It would never ever not make me laugh. And now it's gotten to a point with his career where like he's his views are stored, but now people that make these documentaries and compilation videos, and even to a less extent me. You know, we end up getting all these views from talking about him and his own stuff is not getting it. It's fucking, that must be so distressing. But anyway, let's watch the video. Wait a minute, Wait, how did you eat a booger? This is beyond you. This is you type in Brendan Chubb every day. There's 16 documentaries we go of deep. various little things that he's up to. And he's up to a lot. It's, it's so sad. It's just, you know, be lying fans I was crying last night, cried this morning. And I just, I can't get the thought out of my head. I didn't feel like coming to work today. It's just, it's so sad. You know, what are you gonna do? What? And then, yeah. game, set, match. And uh, yeah, Grim Reaper came knocking on <laughs> the door in Chicago. You know what I love most about this clip? About Brendan basically, you know, saying that he was so distraught and cut up about Kobe Bryant dying that he couldn't come into work, you know. And then the following, you know, clip was of him obviously talking about his wife's grandmother passing. And how distressed that she was, but he just didn't give a fuck about it. The funny thing about it is that it made me realize, and I've said this before, that I honestly think, touch wood, it doesn't happen anytime soon. But if Joe Rogan was to cry, was to die, sorry, not cry. If Joe Rogan passes away, Brendan and those guys are probably going to have a week, maybe a month long of mourning. You would see these guys cry in a way you've never seen them cry before. We might even get a fucking instagram live video of them crying about it all in real time it legitimately is going to be so hilarious and you probably will see that guy cry more for rogan passing than maybe if his own dad passed that's how fucking wild these guys are so that's what made me laugh when i saw this clip i was like this guy's emotional fucking range is so out of whack can't come in for kobe bryant gets distraught about it but when wife's grandmother passes away and you know how latinas how close they are with their families right so clearly that's not like you know that's a that's basically her mum. um he's like the green ripper came and knocking <laughs> so they had to fly out to chicago got the kiddo solo it's it's chaos when you got two kids we got all this drama going on you know in my life and personal issues stuff like that you forget about all that it's all about the kiddos, which is good, man. It's good not, not to take your mind off all that bullshit. Yeah, man. So that's going on. And I'll tell you what, I'm addicted to this drink. I don't know how healthy. It's definitely not healthy, but it's the pink drink from Starbucks. What's wrong with you? A canceled Europe tour, <laughs> struggling to sell tickets in the US. Breweries posting promos with Shorb to then shortly delete them after. Distant from his life oh, by Rogan yeah. and posting Do you remember this? This happened recently, right? Mama mia. Like, Brendan is so fucking toxic or hateable, whatever you want to say, that this random brewery posted a picture of him because, you know, they gave him some stuff to, to fucking drink while he was out there. Or maybe it was a bar. I don't know. They post it to get some fucking interaction. The comments go fucking crazy. They can't handle it. They turn off the comments. Then they deleted the fucking post itself in its entirety. Absolutely wild. <laughs> Promos with Shorb to then shortly delete them after. Distant from his lifeboat, Rogan, and here is another mimic. Theo, who looks like fucking one of George Bush's wives. One of them, either one of them, dude. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Barb, Barbara Bush over here. But I'm not mad. I was not mad about it at all. Barbara Bush over here. <laughs> they call me Pete Repeat because I always say everything twice. Unfortunately, still no mothership set, and well, it's not looking good for SS Shorb. There's the reason, one of the reasons I'm not 
touring so much in the summers, I told my son I'm going to dedicate myself to him for baseball. <laughs> Have you heard him mention this again, by the way? Honestly, I love Brendan, man. The lies are superb. Lying that you're not going to, lying that you had to cancel your European tour because you wanted to teach your son baseball is admirable. But then also using it as an excuse so you don't have to explain why you had to cancel your tour is fucking pathetic. Like, God almighty. And then later on, now he's on tour, isn't it? He's on tour for the whole month of August or something. Like, all that whole thing went out of the way. He's how old? Seven. That's pretty wild that he's understanding. And I, and I, and I told him, and you know, I, I was trying to make him, because really serious. And I was honest with him. I said, I'm, spent, I'm committing myself this summer to you, man. It's you and me, buddy. And that kid is like seven. <laughs> I swear. That kid's seven or something. I swear to God. <laughs> You're waking up with me. I'm, run, I'm running with him in the mornings <laughs> at seven. I'm running with the hills with him in the mornings. We're doing all this shit. I told him, I said, um, it's going to be worth it. But hey, solid parenting if he's doing as he says and a truly not at all transparent way to divert from cancelling your entire tour. And sell out those seats and that's how he was going to provide for me. He says, well, everyone on the internet hates Chris D'Elia, but he does these 5,000 seaters every weekend, so he gets a lot of money. That's what I'm going to do. I'm Brendan. And it didn't work out. The constant interruptions and 110% belief he's correct at all times is starting to really wane on his co-hosts. You're wearing shorts. Yeah, but because nobody hey, sees them. You work for UPS? No, you dress nobody like sees that. them. Don't you wear shorts? Nah, I not at work. Shorts. Oh, really, dude? <laughs> <laughs> but there's a reason we wear clothes that just take a little time, right? Now, remember, over 70 million people vote for him. And you think people, which I don't think... So now, let's go you, through now, it. Now, hold on, B. Yeah. Before you answer that, you know history. You're the best person to ask this. You know yeah. history. Come on, man. Can you go through the list of dictators that imprisoned their constituents that that imprisoned if you go through that list the, the, the i think is, i think there, biden there will win if I, i'm sorry what do you think that is as well by the way because is that just a form of narcissism as well because if that's me right because i guess in in brendan's brain he probably thinks he's way more insightful than what he actually is but if it's me and i'm known to be like a bit of a doofus i don't want to talk for too long because i know i'm gonna say something dumb I actually want people to speak more than I do. I might set some things up. I might throw in your quip here and there, but I'm not going to hold court as if I'm like saying anything meaningful or interesting. Whereas Brendan seems to always want to hear the sound of his own voice. Always. Like even when he's having a conversation with somebody, <laughs> even when in this part, he's asking Brian a question like, hey, you know more about this subject than I do. I'd love to hear your opinion on this. Oh, actually, before you, I hear your opinion, it's like, bro. <laughs> a part of me thinks it may be narcissism and it also might be a form of like, of like disres disrespect. Because I feel like Brendan doesn't do that with everybody. When he goes to Joe Rogan's pod, he doesn't do it as much. That's the thing you have, to, you have to see about Brendan. I think he does kind of tone what he does based on who he's around. So when he's across from Joe Rogan on his podcast, he doesn't do all the shit that people hate him that he does all the time. He doesn't mispronounce as much. He doesn't interrupt as much. He's actually somewhat, some, he actually tries to be funny. He actually admits when he's wrong. All these things that he doesn't do, normally he does do when he's with fucking Rogan. So maybe if he does interrupt you or doesn't let you finish your question, it's a sign he doesn't respect you. An oldie but goodie that demonstrates this, Shaw refuses to acknowledge Africa's true identity. We went to Africa? Well, just for one location. God damn it, what was I going to say? We were in uh, Morocco. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. People say it's Africa best. like it's a country. It's like, like, I do it too all the time. Africa is a country. That's yeah, a big continent. It's a continent, though, yeah. So, like, <laughs> Egyptians are technically <laughs> African, Moroccans yeah, are Everybody's sure. claiming Africa, but so it's a whole Africa continent. Africa could be so but, many but, different places. Yeah, but it's like it's I'm like, American, but I I'm know. From in Denver. I, 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 I know. A legend did Leo de Leo. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. That must be, that might be one of the best clips in my, in ever because look at his face. He actually thinks his friends who are telling him that he's wrong are wrong. He's actually confused as to why they don't think Africa is a country. <laughs> of course it's a country. You know, Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe is just like Denver. <laughs> right? <laughs> Nigeria and Ghana is just like 
Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fucking love him, man. That might be one of the best clips because this is, to me, <clears throat> the perfect representation of why Brendan is sometimes really unlikable. Because of the face. Because I think when he started off, when I was a fan of the pod, my main reason of liking the fire and the kid was that Brendan occupied that kind of lovable, you know, uh, what do you call it? Lovable jock sort of like avatar. That was what he was. But then there was a time, I don't know when that happened. Maybe it was the gigs that he was getting on fucking um, that TV show. What was it? Was it Bravo or something, right? Or E. But somehow along the line, maybe just after the Fox deal kind of imploded. Actually, I'm going to rewrite that. I'm going to say the time that <coughs> I fell out of love with the fire and the kid might have been around the time that Fox didn't renew their contract, which now looking back at it makes me think, you know, they were onto one. Because they were really successful back then and Fox didn't want to sign them. And they kind of went out and Brennan kind of bet on himself, signed with Bent Pixels and all that stuff and, you know, blew up after that. But I think when they did that, when they left Fox, that was probably their first big W. And I think at that time, that was when Brennan was sort of like getting into the podcast business, selling merch and kind of feeling himself. And that's probably when I stopped being a fan because that's when his ego went out of control. Because I think the early Brendan back on Fox days, would never be this smug, would never be this condescending when you get something completely wrong, when it's legitimately, you're the one displaying double-digit IQ, you know, behaviour. Like, he wouldn't be like this, that old other guy. But then as soon as he started to get podcast sponsorships and ads and shit, started selling some merch, started getting, you know, offers to do comedy shows, it all went to his head. He started to really believe that, you know, whatever that he was doing was a, a, a kind of illustration of how smart he was and whatnot. And that's when I kind of fell out of love with it. But I feel like this face is the worst thing about him. Because it's all well and good. You can get those things wrong. I think most of us have seen those videos of guys and girls in America being asked questions about, you know, naming certain cities in fucking Europe and shit. You know, and, and you guys don't really know much outside of your own country. Fair enough. But... It's always done with a bit of humour. It's always done with a bit of a smirk. It's always done in a, in a somewhat self-deprecating way, which he has no ability of doing because he genuinely does believe that he's actually smarter than what he is, which is also really, really funny. Yeah, but it's like it's I'm like, American, but I'm I know in I, Denver. I, 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 I know. A legend did Leo DeLeo called Shaw about for another potential liar about none other than Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I feel like you had a long list, How no? tall is <laughs> The Rock? <laughs> 6'2". Six two. Yeah, I'm no, in the he's yeah. six two. I've been in an elevator room. Is he a big yeah. dude? Like was compared only, to you, how big you is he? Two, though, right? You guys were like. It was just right? a, no. It was just two of us out of oh. out of. Did you say fight. anything? Just what's up? Sup, the rock he's a fan. He said what? He said he's a fan. I said I want to fucking fight you. He's okay, not. I, all of that sounds made yeah. up. <laughs> it's the biggest piece of dog shit. You have. That was one of the best lies he did, because it was so on the cuff. It was so quick, right? They're talking about the rock. And he quickly mentions that he saw him in the lift together all alone. He didn't even want to give the story a hint of humility and say, no, nah, I wasn't. I just saw him during a UFC press juncture one time from across the room, but he didn't look 6'5 to me or whatever. He didn't even want to do that. He just took the full credit. I was right up and close with him. And then he told me he was a big fan. <laughs> I fucking love it. C commentator and former fighter Laura Senko couldn't keep composure at the mention of Shorb's chronic head trauma from his UFC days. What year would have would season ten have been? What year was that? Oh, uh, that would have been 2018. <laughs> no, yeah, because no, I no, think no, no, I'm sorry, well, I'm sorry. Earlier than I that, I was CT. Um, it that's literally five. <sighs> I years shouldn't ago. laugh. I, no, you should. It's fine. It's not a joke. I actually. definitely <laughs> have it. No, um, that would have been 2013. While the fighter in the kid subreddit speaks in the lingo of Shorb's misspoken sentences, this clip where he basically explains what dyslexia is plus the CTE, the poor guy never had a chance. When I see when I see a word, it can be challenging for me. If I hear it, I'm good. <laughs> if I hear the correct pronouncement of the song, uh, or a song or a word, yeah. then I'm good. But I, I love how Chin has never ever once corrected Brendan, for even from back in the day. Chin is what you'd call somebody that, you know, you, he knows how to protect his fucking bread. He knows where the bread's buttered and he does his darndest to make sure he doesn't piss off fucking old papa. 
And it's worked for him. So congrats to Chin. So there's this one constant in fucking Brendan's life, apart from Brian Cannon, it's been Chin so far. He has not fucking let go of that job and he's not letting it go anytime soon. So he'll sit there, hear this guy say pronouncement and not say pronunciation, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you won't say a word. And I give Chin all the respect for that. He deserves all the kudos and all the props for knowing where his bread is buttered and keeping his mouth fucking shut. Like, nope. Not going to try and correct him. Not going to say nothing. Just going to press record. Just going to upload this shit and keep it moving. This is none of my business. <laughs> if this adult man has fucking undiagnosed dyslexia, is a maybe a actual redact, not my business. He pays my bills. He cuts my check. That's all I need to know. Big up chin. <laughs> but after I just read it, it's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Especially if it's foreign. Yep. If Names are hard. Name if it's foreign. Names are tough. Yeah. Names, names are, are tough. tough, yeah. <laughs> Especially Russian names. Say it one more time. Yana Kunitskaya. Yana Kunitskaya. Paulie Shaw calls out Shorb and Eric Griffin for avoiding the live chat before Shorb decides to become a parrot. Because I know there's going to be some bad comments about us right now. Yeah, you don't want that, Paul. You don't yeah. need that in your life, dog. You don't, you don't want that No, you don't want that, man. So we don't go to the comments? Never. You can if you want. She, Chin, I can you? do the good comments if you want. If well, you want Chin to read some of the comments, he can. Good yeah, comments. Can you, you put a couple? Christ, yeah, a couple. So that, when you say it like that, meaning there's probably some really bad ones. That's Chin, why it, Chin, when Chin, you go, well, I can read the good ones. Chin goes, <laughs> Chin goes, there's a few. Tell us what's really happening, Yeah, Chin, Chin goes, there's a few good ones I can read. <laughs> Attempting to interrupt somebody multiple times before they finish their joke to then immediately repeat their joke to the room like it wasn't just said nanoseconds ago. The man needs help. Chin, 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 you go? Once again, Shorb is completely sure he's right and instantly shown he is not. We want you guys to kind of like guess which country has the biggest and which countries have the smallest. And where like maybe the US lies in there. US can be in the middle. Japan dead last. Last, yeah. right. Africa. Yeah. I, no, actually, Africa way, way up. You would think, I, no, it's actually, I think it's somewhere in like Greece has the biggest penis. Really? Why I know this? I don't know. What do you mean by that? There you go. So Greece is actually very low. Wow. On really? That list. Yeah, it's like. God, I don't know my dicks Let me anymore. see. It's 5.24 <laughs> inches on average. Not an expert. Wow. Say. His best pal, Brian Callen, is also having a great time with Steven Crowder. Also recently going off at YouTube, too lazy to try. Oh, shit. What's happened, by the way? What, where, where is Brian Callen and Steven Crowder content? Why haven't we seen anything in a while? I'm confused. What's happening here? Has he left? commentary video on Brian Callen's new job with Crowder leading to the unthinkable. My mom called me very upset. She said there's a video that says Steven Crowder's been humiliating you and put you in a cow suit. And I said, Mom. And I created that video. He never, I know, I said he's never humiliated me. We get along very well. If anything, it's the opposite. And I put myself in that cow suit. And then she went, she goes, why? And I go, I thought it would be funny. So for whoever made that brilliant video, I didn't see it, but apparently you clipped it, so it looks. Oh no! Like, I sent I, it to the group chat. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. It, and we all made fun of you. Okay. Well, so whoever they made, somebody made the video, clipped it up. You made my mom cry. You. What's with this? Also, what's with this thing that everyone always does about never about lying that they didn't see videos? Why? Can someone explain? Why? 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 Why did all these guys lie about fucking not watching their videos? It's so bizarre to me. I think I've noticed it a lot with like low cows. They always fucking lie and say, I didn't see that. I didn't see this. I, I wonder if it's like, if it's like a twofold thing. You want to seem like you're not bothered. You also want to appear like you're busy. But it's strange. Like, why wouldn't you, if you're a popular figure like these guys are, why wouldn't you check out some videos of you online when people are talking about you? You just would what? You just want to pretend like it doesn't exist when it clearly does. You're not at least the bit curious, intrigued to see what these guys are saying about you even for the good even for the worse or for the better it's a very strange thing to say because they're obviously lying like i didn't see it like especially if you, when you keep saying it i didn't see it i didn't see it i don't read comments i don't look it's like come on bro come on the lady does process too much really you didn't see it really you son of a bitch good video though Congratulations. No, I, These I, people I, are so I, creative. I, I haven't seen that video. Yeah, somebody made an video. amazing video. Oh, yeah, video. see? See? Look at that. I didn't see that one. I saw another one, but I didn't see that one. Yeah. Two ladies to try. Great guy. Never met him. But, but hey. It's just like, <laughs> Brian Callen, 
is being humiliated. Yeah, yeah. But it, but it, they, I, I guess they clipped it in such a way. I, my no, we didn't. They didn't. You didn't fucking clip it. It was a clip of your own fucking Instagram. I swear. Didn't two days to try just grab the clip from Brian Callen's Instagram of him bending over and Crowder slapping him. There's nothing to take out of context. <laughs> Poor mother. So I think Steven Crowder also owes Brian's mother an apology. You know, they titled the podcast, Steven Crowder Made Brian's Mother Cry. So it sounds like they agree with me. So I think on the next show that Brian does with Steven, he should ask him to apologize to his mother. I don't want to have all that put on me. Musician Jelly Roll visited the fighter and the kid and surprise. We found the first known fan of Shorb's latest special. I will yeah. say watching your set develop is something I got to do where I watched you in the pandemic come with new material. Yeah. To Zane, he's like 2020 pandemic. Yes, sir. And then I watched Gringo Poppy, and of course I'd seen you right before that, yep. back in Nashville. And it was still from 2020 to 2021 or whatever, late 21 or 22, whenever I seen you, totally different set almost. There was like maybe two or three things that made it yes, from sir. the first yep. 45 minutes I've yep. seen. And then even from that to you finalizing the product and going, this is what I'm putting out, was still like, there was fucking, I think it was like a, you did like a, 41 minute special. It was a little bit over 40 minutes or 30 something minutes. Yep. And there was still like 20 something minutes of new laughs yes, for me. So that was a f***ing lie. Sure. To be fair to Jelly Roll, to be fair to Jelly Roll, he seems like a really nice dude. I'm going to be fair to you. He seems like a really nice dude. The type of person that wouldn't want to, you know, like an earnest person that doesn't want to engage in negativity. So it wouldn't surprise me if he is an actual fan or if he just said that stuff just to be nice. So I'm not going to rag on him too much because I feel like he seems like a really decent guy. When I watch him on podcasts and stuff, he comes across pretty cool. Music ain't for me and stuff, but he's got, you know, he's, a, he's the type of personality that I like in music sometimes where you might not even like their songs, but because they're nice people, you give them a chance, you know? And you might, you know, you might not like what they make overall, but you might like a song here and there, but because they're a decent person, you kind of give them benefit of the doubt. So I kind of don't mind Jelly Roll. I'm not going to lie. I kind of don't mind him. So I don't, you know, He's probably lying there, but also, hey, it is what it is, isn't it? It's a part of the game. He's on Brendan's show. What's, what's he going to do? Is, is he going to start fucking ripping into his special right in front of him? Probably not. So I'm okay with the story that he made up. Once again, inflates his NFL career while putting down every other notable athlete he can remember. Let me ask you this, because there's been, when you look at the successful guys who played football, one of the UFC, you'd have Brock Lesnar, uh, Mitrione, myself. <laughs> And then Greg Hardy. Yeah. I think the biggest one is Greg Hardy because he had the best NFL career out of all of us, right? I had a cappuccino with the Buffalo Bills. Mitchell Owen <coughs> played six years. Wasn't really like a starter. He got some play. Brock Lesnar just went to training camp. So yeah. me and Brock are similar. Training camp. It's something. There's yeah. something about But I hate when people, dude, if you could get, you know, John Jones in the NFL, I'm like, oh, he wouldn't make it. I don't think you have the facilities for that, big man. <laughs> you want to get through high school football. Yeah. It's a different set of things. Being a, a high level wrestler it has nothing to do with football. athleticism. No, yeah. but, but you have to be different. crazy athletic to be a world champion. Those guys aren't a, they couldn't sniff the NFL athletic. Uh, what, what's going, so what's going to, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you the transition. NBA I'm going to tell you what's, what's going on in the transition from these guys. So you got, as you say, you, you played a little bit in the NFL. <laughs> and a lot of, <laughs> with the other point, look at Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Didn't sniff the NFL. Yeah, got, that, got, that's also Bubba because again, football is the, those intangible skills that take a long time to develop. So he was new. Like I don't think he played in college, right? He played in high school. Who? Brock Lesnar. He's a wrestler in college. He's, he's a wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. So you know he's playing against guys, and there's just those details that make all. The but difference. I'm saying he's athletic. Couldn't sniff the NFL. Sure, been NFL. Okay, so with this NFL stuff, for me, one thing I need to make a mention of is that you can tell that. Brendan not making it into the NFL is still something that he kind of is very insecure about. And it's obviously something that keeps him up at night, something he kind of probably thinks about here and there because of maybe how it played out, right? Because, you know, professional sports, as much as it is about talent and about hard work and all this monarchy, there are some intangibles that sometimes happen. You know, the timing, the area you're born in, bloody blah, blah, can sometimes affect it. And even sometimes just your mental state. Your, your inability to fucking, you know, be resilient, to bounce back from injuries, bad performance, all this sort of stuff can impact your ability to make it. And there's been plenty of stories of like journeymen who are terrible at the sports, but just, you know, are like basically journeymen that, you know, maybe flop out a team, they're part of a practice squad, um, and they basically have a somewhat decent career on paper, but they never actually do anything meaningful or impactful on the fucking inner sport that they're in. So I can understand. Again, if any person, if you're Brendan and you have friends who actually made it, you feel, fuck, man, I should have did it. But 
for me, the thing that's funny about him lying about his NFL career, I don't know. I don't know much about American football. I don't know anything about it. But one thing I do know about it is that it's full of um, it's full of what you call it. It's full of loads of actual geeks that look over the stats and numbers and shit. And it's one of those sports where they report on everything. Everything is, every statistic is fucking documented. So even if you're paying fucking flag football in some league somewhere, there is somebody out there, you know, noting down how many, whatever you had. Like people are writing these things down in college and everything. So for me, it's a really weird lie to put out there because there's always somebody out there that has footage of when you played in college, that has records of when you played in college, that had records of when you played or if you did play in the NFL, that probably has records of practice squad stuff. Like everything is documented. So for me, I don't understand why he'd lie about that. That's the thing that really gets me because it's so, it's so easily disprovable. Like, why would you lie? That's the thing that I don't understand, which to me makes it very clear that most likely... It's an incredible insecurity and hang-up that he still has that he doesn't want to let go of. And it's obviously a huge part of his identity. That's basically what it is. But it's so weird to lie about it because everybody has deals of it. If you go on a foreign kid subreddit, there was one particular guy actually had got hold of like all of the stuff about his college and shit. And it basically painted the picture that he was pretty terrible at football. Like super average. He actually was way better at you know, being a UFC fighter and he was a flipping American football player and even then he wasn't that good at UFC fighter. So <clears throat> you can see what level he was at. NFL star Aaron Rodgers are the bestest of friends. Anybody saying otherwise is a liar. No, I didn't go to Austin. Well, you did Because I remember I was going to meet Aubrey and uh, Aaron Rodgers in Austin. Yeah. He was like, hey, we got to be in Denver for this convention. Meet us there. I'm oh, like, God. I need a reason to come to Denver. So I flew to Denver. Spoiling movies and shows and calling it a podcast is one of Shorb's favorite go-to padding moves. The audience doesn't want it, Callan doesn't want it, and yet... So then the day he's going to announce, he's going on Jay Leno, and Jay Leno assumed, he goes, you know, I don't want to know what they're going to talk about, I want to be surprised at the natural reaction, but we all yeah, but assume... you're killing me right now because I want to see this stuff. But I'm saying, he, he, but I'm saying Jay Leno has just like, assumed that... He, I, I, you're giving me all the turning points that I want to see. Well, he I becomes governor, gonna, Brian. I know, but right? I, I want to see these... Can you not give me every... The detail? Yeah, I'm, on, I'm watching the documentary. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, I, no, I'm sorry, I, I know this stuff. I know, but I want to yeah. see it. Yeah, the, the bottom line, because we got to do a podcast and talk about stuff. So the bottom line is, he, he becomes <laughs> governor. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger became governor. I know, but can you but not when go you, through that? Like, no, I know. I know. That. I'm not going to give any of that stuff out. <laughs> I know relax. the story. I know. Relax. We got the podcast to do, bud. But you're going so, through. No, I'm not. I'm dropping that detail, Brian. You no, know, I'm not, uh, bud. He becomes governor, yeah. which we all fucking know. If you don't, run yourself into a wall. So he becomes governor, right? Sure, recently got. <laughs> That was fucking one of the best ones because that was legitimately another thing that I remember when I fucking um, stopped listening to Friday Kid and I saw and I started reading um, the fucking subreddit. That was one of the things that people used to hate about him the most that he'd do all the time. But I think you guys or ourselves have to be thankful that Brendan wasn't a fan of Game of Thrones when it first started because it, it was it took a long time for Brendan to like Game of Thrones. For the longest time, he'd be like, oh, it's fucking dragons and all this shit. Why would I like this shit? And naturally, he was late. And then fucking four years later, he starts watching it. And he lo and the best the, the the worst season, he obviously loves, which is fucking typical Brendan, right? The fucking last season, he absolutely thinks it was great. And he thinks everybody was kind of, you know, uh, overreacting with how terrible it was when clearly all the fans that actually like the show will say the last, you know, few seasons was terrible. We have to be quite thankful that he didn't actually watch Game of Thrones when we all did. Because if we did, he would have fucking spoiled it every single week for you. And that was the one thing that was, you know, one of the biggest sins you could have done at the height of Game of Thrones was spoil it for a fan, right? You had to kind of just, you, or you had to maybe stay off a of fucking, um, you had to stay off a of fucking social media and shit. But Brendan would have definitely spoiled it for all of us if he watched it. So I'm thankful that he actually didn't watch it at the time that he did. Got very salty that his thick boy crew <laughs> had a holiday while he worked. Acting as if he's never had a holiday while his Jamie Chin is fearfully thankful for a mere three days of family time. The whole thick boy team went on a little vacation last week. Got you, homie. Uh, I didn't. I was here. Casey was here. Chin was in uh, uh, the Tokyo? Motherland. No, damn it. Not Tokyo. How dare you? Seoul, South Korea, man. That's right. Yeah, there you go. How was it? It was amazing. Was it dope? Yeah, it was amazing.
It's, it's and the food's good. Everything it's great. Food's amazing. Just walking around's amazing. Family was great. It was just a, a beautiful time. Really? Yeah. yeah. How long were you out there? <sighs> five days. It takes like a day to get there and a day to get back. So five yeah. days. Beast. Yeah. Glad you had fun, buddy. Did you Thanks, feel man. refreshed? Was it a good break for you? It was a beautiful break. So thank you for that too. <laughs> God, I love Chin, man. He knows he's breast buttered. Thank you, boss, for permitting me to go on a vacation, the first in seven years, for only five days, to my fucking motherland, to visit all my family and friends, for only fucking five days, just fucking half way around the world. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's so pathetic. It was, I mean, it was a beautiful break for sure. Dude. Yeah. Brian was in Jerusalem or some shit. I don't know. He's Israel riding camels, somewhere. Israel, yeah. some shit. No break <laughs> for us. Case played golf, I assume. Yeah. yeah. Golf and work, man. That's what we do, daddy. Shorb goes on a tirade against pretty much everybody in less than 60 seconds. Enjoy. She was like, she won the, the state or some shit. Gymnastic is interesting. Do we consider Here a sport, we go. He's right? going to be a hater, right? <laughs> do we consider, you know, because there's no Bro, ball it's involved. unbelievable. There's no ball involved, though. So what, bro? Neither fighting. I'm going to beat you to it. So, okay. Yeah, it's a bad maybe example. they should. There's balls know, involved. Maybe fighting. they should. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they should fight. I think. <laughs> oh my god. I w- right. Who would win? His wife would yeah, beat yeah, Chris's ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mexican dude. That's what I'm saying. She, she ninja just... warred the wall to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, she's thicker. You know, my wife's like a stick. Yeah. You know, crowbar. Um. <laughs> Jesus Christ, yo, <clears throat> yo, <laughs> yo. <laughs> I swear to God, <laughs> if someone said that about my wife to my face, describe my wife as a stick. No, I said my wife as a stick as a joke, and then you said my wife was a crowbar, <laughs> which is actually one of the funniest Brendan things I've heard in a while. Describing somebody, a woman, and she looks like a crowbar. It's fucking wild. And look at Chris's face. <laughs> he can't do nothing. He just has to sit there and take it. Oh, a crowbar. Yo, I would have lost it. Oh my God. The disrespect is fucking insane. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I've been going. You know, they have to do a dance off instead. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know can if you want that dance? either. Can yeah, dance, dude. Really? Latina can't dance. Well, I mean, I don't know. It's like a black guy not be able to play basketball. I, I mean, bro, I've seen black guys not be able to play basketball. Just Chappelle, AC. He can't wear it. Oh, he's bad. But really? He's also an expert on Ted Bundy, incessantly sure he's entirely correct. No matter how well read he is or isn't in the current subject, honestly, it must be infuriating to work as tech for this shit. Ted Bundy never, no, Ted Bundy never admitted it. In the days prior to his death, Bundy finally confessed to the chilling murders of 36 women. I think it's 70, by the way. Ted Bundy never admitted it. If the initials of BS didn't set you off, maybe some more constant interruptions will. That's where the, that's where the kids get the looks. Well, this is young Beverly D'Angelo. God, that ain't that a bitch? Yeah, but you know, and you, you just wake up and you go, fuck. Beverly is, No, th- uh, that's not, Brian, th- he, those are kids Baba, with somebody else. Baba, I promise that's, you. Brian, who's that on the right over there? That's his girlfriend, Baba. I, I no, know, that's not his girlfriend. <laughs> Baba, I know wherever I speak here. Just telling you, Brian, or Chin, type in uh, Al Pacino. They do, his Wikipedia will show up the, the spouses and kids. I'm getting, that's not them being, that's both. from a different marriage. Baba. So Beverly D'Angelo, uh, Stand two Trump. kids we were at. Again, sure, really just has to. Oh, sure. Natashki said, men that are into serial killers and true crimes are very sus to me. Yeah, really? I would say anybody that's super into that is a bit sus. I think we all, regular, regular people, regular people, I think all have a little phase where you get into that sort of shit. In the same way, I think there was a time where we were probably all watching footage of like Ukraine war stuff, right? Then comes a period where it starts to become a little bit much and you just stop watching it. Stop following it for a little bit. Um, But I would say, regardless of gender, anybody that's super into fucking true crime stuff is bizarre. Especially this level of true crime at the moment now. Because when I used to like check out true crime sort of stuff, the... The furthest it went was like interrogation videos. But nowadays, the level that they're going to now is that they're kind of getting a hold of court documents. They're getting a hold of autopsy pictures and shit. They're getting, you know, a hold of images from the fucking crime scene. That's when I'm like, 
I'm out. You know what I mean? Re tell me a story about some serial killer, what they did. Show me an interrogation video. Them get arrested, fair enough. Maybe some courtroom footage. But I'm not looking for autopsy pictures. I don't want to see a crime scene. Sometimes I don't even want to see the fucking weapon. Do you know what I mean? But that's the level it's kind of got to now at this kind of stage. And I'm like, you know what? I'm out. I think for Brendan... Because he's so redacted, he uses the fact that... No, excuse me, redacted, I think the interest in serial killer docs and stuff and being into that sort of thing is an easy way for him to convince himself he's smart. Because, you know, you get spoon-fed information that you probably would never find out on your own or retain via a documentary. You get, like, ages of the person, the victims, where they're from. There's a bit of psychology involved there. There might be a bit of history. There might be a bit of sociology involved there also. Um, you know, it kind of it kind of fools you into thinking you're smart. Um, but I think anybody that's super into it, that follows all the podcasts, that watches all the videos, that subscribes to the Patreons, that's on Discord groups discussing serial killers. Yeah, you know I mean it's a bit much. It's in the same way, like I said, like, you know, there was a time in my life where I used to fucking love checking out the sub, watch people die. And then over time, you're like, you know what? This is actually affecting me negatively. I can't sleep at night. You just stop watching it. <laughs> you don't keep watching it for fun. I'm not there watching that, watch people die somewhere, eating fucking popcorn. You know what I mean? It's not that. It's not that level. <laughs> to A, stop interrupting or repeating jokes. B, play into the jokes people make online to own it and show self-awareness. C, keep studying his Ah, okay, cool. My bad. I see what you mean there, Tashki. Women live our lives with an element of danger that men are oblivious to listening to those stuff has literally saved my life okay i see what you mean i see what you mean i see what you mean that makes a lot of sense there is a little bit of um fascination in that respect if you're a woman also just intrigued and also like i said does that kind of information in terms of actually making you aware of little things that maybe serial killers or predators may do that you can avoid doing to not make you a target or something or whatever it may be or, or not be put in their crosshairs that makes complete sense to be fair but there are just some instances where no matter what documentaries or things that you watch, it's not going to really help you. Like I remember one fucking distressing story I remember reading. Um, yeah, I remember seeing actually one time, I think in the UK, one girl got raped and the fucking horrible thing about it was, that if I remember correctly, the guy that did it, I think one of his last things, I think sometimes they say when serial killers do crimes, maybe the ones towards the end of them get kind of caught they go out they try and go out of the bang so maybe they start doing things out of routine maybe out of impulse they start getting a little bit lazy because they kind of want to get caught um so this time this guy allegedly or not allegedly he did get convicted for it he went and stalked a couple that was walking through a field or somewhere in the countryside and he essentially was able to rape the woman in front of her boyfriend while he was basically you know I think he threatened him with a knife or something. That was one of the most distressing. And I think it was like broad daylight, middle of the afternoon. He rapes this girl in front of her husband um, somehow. It's fucking awful, awful story. And I remember reading that thinking to myself, God damn. God damn. After most comedians weren't doing big shows a few years in, maybe then we won't have an endless onslaught via 130,000 anti-fans at the Fighter and the Kids subreddit. A truly strange situation to be in, and thank you for watching. You know, I post it, co-post it, we collaborate, then I'm reading the comments, I was like, do your fans like you? Oh, us? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Jay Shaw! <laughs> oh, that was yeah. a good one. It's like, they, it's... I was like, oh, I remember this world. Well, yeah. those aren't fans. The, you know, those are... They're listening and posting. Well, exactly. They're, they're listeners. You specifically. I'm like, There's all Brandon does is fucking try to help others and mind yeah. his own business. But they don't know that. <sighs> yeah, they just... They, they just they, well, no, they, they do, though. They just they think do. he's cocky, football player. And they just they think do. he's cocky, football player. And I love that. I love the assumption that everybody that doesn't like Brendan is just like upset that he is a football player, which is a weird thing to be upset about somebody, to be completely honest. But again, it's just another classic trait of low cows, that inability or maybe narcissism again, just that inability to understand why somebody doesn't, doesn't like you. Um, but hey, I guess it is what it is. But Big Up Retroactive, the continuous implosion of Brendan Schaub, available on their channel. Check it out if you haven't already. Um, really good little documentaries and compilations they put together. I did enjoy that. 